Good morning and welcome to Hope for the Family with Evangelist Moyo Antonia Adem. God is good all the time. We bless God for keeping us alive to see this day which he has made. We rejoice and be glad in it. The child of victory and rejoicing are ahead all the time in the tent of the righteous. Our God has kept us righteous because of his own good purpose for each one of us. As we come for God this morning, let us bless him and thank him for his goodness to us all. That we are alive to see this wonderful day which God has made. It's not through our own effort, but God has kept us alive. Let us glorify God and bless him for his goodness to us all of us in the name of Jesus. Hallelujah. Amen. Amen. Let's give God a clap for him this morning. In the name of Jesus. Father, you are our God, you are our helper, you are our shield and strength. We thank you for everything you have done for us. In Jesus' mighty name. Amen. As we go into our Bible study session this morning, we want to take a moment to pray, to invite the Spirit of God to come in to help us this day. In Jesus' mighty name. Amen. Father, we bless you. We exalt your holy name. That our God, we have no other God to be. We thank you, God, for everything you have done for us. Be that exalted our God in Jesus' mighty name. Amen. We acknowledge you this day that you are God and God alone. God in our families, in our nations, O Lord God, God in our lives and in the lives of our children. We bless you, Lord God, for the body of Christ. We exalt your name. We, we thank you. Father, this morning as we come before you, we also acknowledge that we are sinners, that we have sinned against you in so many ways. We ask for forgiveness in ways that we are falling short of your glory this day in Jesus' name. We plead the blood of Jesus. Our Lord God Almighty, we thank you for everything you do in our lives today, by the working power of your Holy Spirit that dwells in us. Jehovah God, as we go out today, we pray that your Spirit will quicken us to always remember that you have given us the command, O oh Lord God, to take this gospel of salvation to the nations. May we be faithful in doing your will this day in Jesus' mighty name. Amen. Our Lord God Almighty, as we go into our Bible session, study session this morning, we invite your Holy Spirit to come in to help us. Spirit of the living God, take control of everything we are going to do this morning. Instruct us. Open our eyes to take out from our passage everything that we need to become better people for our God and for our community. In the name of Jesus. Amen. Where we are falling short of the glory of God, correct us. We pray in the name of Jesus. Give us the strength we need today. Where we are discouraged and courageous. In the name of Jesus. Father, we bless you. Thank you for everything you do to us today. In Jesus' mighty name we are prayed. Amen. Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. If God has been good to you, testify about the goodness of God to the people around you. Ensure that they know the God that you know, the God that you put your trust in, that you have placed your trust in, the God that has never failed you. You know that your, your expectation to see the goodness of God in the land of the living will never be cut short. Because the God who has promised is able to keep his promises. That's the God we have. And that's why we can come before him every morning to thank him, to, to lift up his name for his goodness to us, to exalt him because he's God alone. Hallelujah. Amen. At this time, let us take a moment to reflect on the goodness of God, where God has brought us from, the things that we used to do in the past that God delivered us from. Let us bless Him that He's our God today, that He has given us everything, that through Christ we can do all things. Let us thank Him that we believe in His testimony, that truly He has given us salvation through Jesus Christ, that nothing that we can do through our own human effort will make us righteous with Him, that He loves us so much. And he has said that nothing can separate us from his love. That we truly believe that he loves us. Because it was because of his love that he sent his son, our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ, to die for us. Let us thank God this morning. Father, thank you. You are our God. We bless you. We exalt your name. We glorify your name, O Lord God. We lift you above every other name that we can ever imagine. You are God only alone. In the assemblies of the God, you are worthy to be praised. You are feared among the other gods. Father, we thank you. We bless you. Glory. Hallelujah. Amen. You are our God. We see what the praise you did. You keep your covenant to your children, God. You never fail. I hope that one day we will inherit your eternal kingdom with our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ. We will not fail us in the name of Jesus. We believe that the same power that you exerted in Jesus Christ when you raised him from the dead, that you exert that same power in us. We believe today that we have your spirit dwelling in us. That you've given us your power, your love, and sound mind, O oh Lord God, to do the things that we, we will do in this world, the things that you have, you have commanded us to do, Father Lord, amongst the nations, as we take this gospel of salvation, O oh Lord, oh Lord God, to the nations, to tell them about your goodness, that you've given us salvation through Jesus Christ, that men do not need to struggle any longer to become righteous with you. 
that everything you have given us to us will be a sinner. You've given us everlasting life. That's many that will believe in Jesus Christ and receive salvation that they have been reconciled to you. Father, we bless you. We thank you, God. Glory, hallelujah, amen. We say the praise this morning, our Father, that our God, in Jesus' mighty name, we have worshipped. Amen. Praise God. Hallelujah. Amen. Everything we have comes from God. Amen. Let us rejoice in the presence of God today and enjoy fellowship with Him. He created us because He wants to enjoy fellowship with us, and that can never change the reason for which He created us. So whenever we come before the presence of God, let us remember why God created us. He's our God. Amen. And unto Him, with all the presence return, all our thanks. Amen. We give him thanks to say, Amen. He's the only one that we can worship. We can't worship the things he created. Amen. We will create God with our own hands. We are rejecting the God who created us. We are telling him that he's not God and that it's it's sin. We have to repent of all unbelief and have the Spirit of God to continue to help us to do the will of God in Jesus' name. Amen. We believe this day that God has set a table before us and he has invited us to a feast. Our Father said that his table must be filled up with people, with his children. If we reject the invitation of God today, we will go out to bring the people outside to come in. There must be people. We remember the story of the banquet in, 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 the, in the, the wedding banquet in the Bible, where the feast was set. Invitations were set out, and those invited did not come. And the king said that they should go out to bring people, bring the sick, bring people on the street corners that my table must be filled up. Amen. In the name of Jesus. If those of us that the Lord has invited will not come, there are people outside there that must feed on the table that the Lord has set. Let us remember today. Amen. That it's a privilege for us to be called the children of God. It's not, He created us, but we know that we sinned. We offended God and we strayed from Him. Amen. And He has brought us back. He has set that table. He's standing at the door. He's knocking. If those of us that He has invited will not come, there are people outside that God we come, we invite to come into to 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 enjoy other feasts with him, to eat with him. Amen. Because that table must be filled up with souls in the name of Jesus. Amen. When the king sent to to the people he invited, they were very busy. Everyone was going about their daily activities. Some said I'm sorry, I'm just worried a wife, I cannot come. Some said they have very important business to take care of. Some just said they had nothing to do, but they could not just go because they were concerned about the worries of their daily living, the, the challenges they were passing through in life. They had refused to leave all those things they were doing, the things that they devote their time to. They refused to forget about them for a moment to enjoy the feast that was set before them. We have some of us are in that same situation today that the Lord has set a table before us. We do not want to partake of the feast. We are thinking about cares and of this world. The cares of this world are real. They are there. But for a moment when the Lord invites us that we should forget about everything, lay everything that thing down at the feet of Jesus, that we should join in the feast. Let us come to that feast and to enjoy. Because our God can take care of whatever problems we find ourselves in. We must believe that it's our God. That the God who created us loves us so much and will give us everything. Today, let us take a moment to forget about all the problems, the challenges we are passing through in life. Let us enjoy with the Lord. Let us have fellowship and enjoy the food that God has sent before us in the presence of our enemies. Amen. Some will say that where is the food? I can't see the food. What is she talking about? This is spiritual food. Amen. Let's feed, eat from the word of the, of the Lord. It is food. Amen. It will nourish our souls. It will give us the strength we need today. It will open our eyes to see what God has done for us. It will give us an utterance today, a word of God that we, that we can take out to encourage people who are passing through difficult times in their lives today. Amen. It will heal the sickness of somebody, someone that is sick today, in the mighty name of Jesus. It will give empowerment to someone that is weak. Amen. Because the grace of God is embodied in the word that God is going to give to us today. It's a life-giving word of God that we have that we have received the truth that, that, that has delivered us from the kingdom of darkness that we are taking out to the nations in the name of Jesus. Let us believe that in that world we will find everlasting life. That in, the, in this life, that that world will give us the enablement to live as God 
wants us to live in this world, to enjoy everything, to believe that yes, that we have the best portion of everything that God can ever give to his children here in this world. We are not looking at our situations, we are looking at, we, we are thinking about what God says concerning us. We are holding on to the promises of God and we know that God will not fail us in the name of Jesus. That our expectation to see his goodness in the land of the living. We never fail. As long as we remain in Christ and we continue to do good works that God has called us to do. In Jesus' mighty name. Amen. Glory. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Amen. Now I'm going to read from the book of Second Corinthians, chapter 2, from verses 1 to 5. I want you to know how much I am struggling for you and for those at Laodicea. And for all who have not met me personally, my purpose is that they may be encouraged in heart and in heart and united in love, so that they may have the full riches of complete understanding, in order that they may know the mystery of God, namely Christ, in whom are hidden all the treasures of wisdom and knowledge. I tell you this so that no one may deceive you by the fine sounding arguments. For though I am absent from you in body, I am present with you in spirit and delight to see how orderly you are and how firm your faith in Christ is. Hallelujah. Amen. This is the letter of the Apostle to the, to the Colossians. He wrote to them about his struggles, that he was struggling, struggling for them, which is the, the right thing for him to have done at that time. He was struggling for them because the Lord Jesus Christ commissioned him to be an apostle to the Gentiles with the same day with which he persecuted the church. That was the same day with which he walked in the Lord's fire. That he wanted them to know that he was struggling for them and for those at Laodicea. And for all who have not met me personally, like even those that have not met him personally, that was struggling for them. This, the, the Apostle Paul was someone who was busy about doing the Lord's way. He did not waste any time. In, he had that encounter with the Lord Jesus Christ, and at once he knew that he was meeting with the living Son of God. Hallelujah. Amen. That, that was the truth. And he held on to it. And he took it to the nations to proclaim the gospel the way he was commissioned to do. In the name of Jesus, he did not appoint himself as the, an apostle. You know his story. From the book of Acts, we knew who he was and what he did. He said it many times as they walked among the various nations. Amen. That he wanted them to know that he was struggling. Yes, whatever we are doing for the Lord, let us do it with joy, knowing that God, who has promised that there's a crown of glory for those that we do His work, that truly that God is able to fulfill that promise for each one of us in the name of Jesus. May we not become saddened because of the work we are doing. May we not become afraid because of persecution, especially especially in these evil days that we hear about terrible things happening around the world. Just yesterday we heard about what happened, happened at the parliament, the parliament building in Canada. So there are people there who have given their souls to the evil one that they are just ready to disrupt the peace of the world. But as children of God, let us hold on to the faith that we have received. Let us be prayerful because we are in the evil time. Let us be prayerful that God will prevail in every situation. Whatever gifts that God has given to us, let us use it to bless the body of Christ, to lift up the nations before God. Let us do it with rejoicing. Because we know that the God that has promised is able to keep his promise, is able to help us in the end. It's not by our own power that we are going to do it, but by the Spirit of God. And that Spirit of God that is in us, we help us to do the will of God, where we concentrate on what the most important reason why we are in this world. Amen. As we hear about evil things happening around the world, let us let our spirit, let us not be overburdened by the sadness, by sadness or by the things we hear. Let us just realize that this is the time that the Bible speaks about, the times of prophecies, that we should be busy about doing the Lord's way continually praying for the body of Christ and for the children of God all over the world. For even those that are fighting against the Spirit of God, that are about going about the world doing these evil things, let us pray for them that they will receive the truth, that the veil that is over their, their, their faces, covering them, preventing them from understanding the will of God, that they will understand that God created us all and God loves us. And if the love of God is in us, no one will lift up their hands against their brother or anyone in this world created by God to kill that person and believe that they are killing the person for God. Amen. 
that God will help them, that they will understand, so that the love of God will find a place into their hearts, and they can repent of their sins. In Jesus' mighty name, amen. We thank God for everything. Whatever we do for God, let us do it with rejoicing. Amen. When we pass through persecutions and different kind of troubles in this world, let us rejoice. That's the calling that we have as children of God. In everything, let us rejoice. Let us thank God because our God will never fail us in the mighty name of Jesus. So the apostle was filled with rejoicing. Each time he heard about the good news of the people he walked amongst. Amen. And he too was rejoicing for his labor, for his struggle because he knew that God would be able to finalize everything he started in his life and he would win that crown. He was looking up to that goal each time. Leaving those things that were behind him and pressing on to the high calling of God in Christ Jesus. It should be the same with us. Let us press on. Let us not give up and trust God that God is going to help us to the end. In Jesus' mighty name. Amen. Praise the Lord. Amen. Verse 2. My purpose is that they may be encouraged in heart and filled in love, so that they may have the full riches of complete understanding. The purpose for the apostles' struggle for the people. Is that that they may be encouraging heart. Amen. He knew what his purpose was. It was he wanted to encourage the people so that they would be filled with complete understanding of the will of God. Amen. And he knew that he had to labor to make that to happen in the lives of the believers. Amen. We were once without hope. We did not know this world. We did not know the world. It was nothing else. But people came, they labored. They came from far away places. And that was the same purpose they had, that we may be encouraged, that we know that we are not going to remain under the control of the evil world, of the basic principles of this world, that God has given us deliverance. Amen. That's the world that brings life, that brings encouragement to the children of God when it's preached to them. It was preached to us and we saw the light. We are encouraged and we received the word because we believed it was good. What we are hearing was very good. It gave us the, the hope that we, we did not know we had. It rekindled that hope that was in us, that we did not even know was there. It was there because of the things that was that were happening around us. So that was the purpose of the apostle. Apostle that they, that they, my purpose is that they may be encouraged, that they may be encouraged in heart and united in love. Amen. United as one body. Amen. He had the love of God in him. As soon as he met Jesus Christ, a new spirit came over him. That spirit of destruction was no longer there. Amen. And the same compassion and love that God ha had for his children was in the apostle. It should be with every one of the same with every one of us. As we have made an account that we have we know Jesus Christ. Amen. We have accepted him as our Lord and Savior. The love of God should be in our hearts. And if the love of God is in our hearts, then we should think about the welfare, the well-being of everyone around us, especially the body of Christ, and even those that are outside of the body of Christ, because they are all God's children. Amen. So our purpose should be to encourage them, because we know that constantly in this world we are in a struggle against the forces of darkness. Everyone created, everyone in the flesh, we have to pass through the same struggle. So we have to encourage people, and we have to, so that they can be united in love. When they see the love of God in us, Amen. And that we show that love. We want to be the channel of God's peace to the world. Amen. People will respond back to love in the, in the same way by the special grace of God if there's no evil inside of them. Amen. So this word of God will push away every evil when they truly surrender themselves to God in Jesus' mighty name. Amen. So that's the same purpose we have that people will be encouraged and they'll be united in love so that they may have the full riches of complete understanding. Because when people understand the will of God, they will not continue to do those evil things from which God has already delivered them. Amen. They will surrender all their members to God to use as instrument of righteousness. They will believe the testimony of God. They will begin to proclaim this gospel of salvation to the nations. In everything they do, they will think about the implication of their of their of their actions. How it will affect their community and how God will receive it. Amen. When we get to that place where we understand God's will for us, we have a complete understanding of, of what God has called us to do in this world and why we are created. Everything we do will be to give God glory, amen, and to bless our communities. We understand that the gifts that God has given to us are not meant for us alone, to keep to ourselves or to our families, but to use to bless the people around us. So no matter what the situation, situations we may be passing through, our most, uh, the desire of our hearts will be to bless the body of Christ, to bless our community and to do the will of God in the name of Jesus. Amen. Because we have full understanding 
we have the full riches of complete understanding of the will of God for his children. In Jesus' name, amen. In order that they may know the mystery of God, namely Christ. The full understanding of God's way is embodied in Christ. Amen. When we understand it, we understand who Christ is to us and who Christ is to God. And why Christ came to this world to redeem us from, from our sinful nature. Amen. From our, all our sins. Amen. Why God made him a sin sacrifice for us is the mystery of God's love. In him we have the, the fullness of God's love, of God's grace, of the faithfulness of God, the righteousness of God. Everything was demonstrated in our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ. Uh, the apostle referred to Christ that in whom are hidden all the treasures of wisdom and knowledge. He said of Christ is hidden all the treasures of God's wisdom and knowledge. Amen. So when we understand our relationship with Christ and what he did for us, we have a full under understanding of God's speed. When we accept it and we receive it, then we continue to grow in spiritual things according to the will of God. Because God does not want us to remain in the same position, he wants us to get to that stage, spiritual stage, um, to attain unto that spiritual maturity where we can say this word and boldly and fearfully and fearlessly proclaim the gospel to the people around us because we believe in what we have received that it is the truth, it's the word of God, the word of God that gives life to men, the word that shone in our darkness and showed us that we are sinners. And we are able to repent of our sin. Amen. That in Christ is, the, is, the, is all the early treasures of wisdom and knowledge, of God's wisdom and knowledge. Amen. When we have a complete understanding, the Spirit of God that dwells in us will continue to reveal God's wisdom and knowledge to us. Amen. And it's according to the will of God in Jesus' name. Amen. I tell you this so that no one may deceive you by fine sounding arguments. They will not be deceived by the people around us by finding arguments that will lead to nothing, that will make people to begin to gratify the flesh or to disobey God. Amen. And when we do that, we will be sowing to the destruction of our souls because we sow to corruption. Amen. We want to sow to eternal life. That which will give us eternal life, that we can we will receive all the things that God has promised us as His children in Jesus' name. Amen. For though I am absent from you in body, I am present with you in spirit. That's the apostle that I may be absent from you with body, but in my spirit I'm present with you. I'm praying for you. I'm thinking about you. I'm still laboring in the Lord's vineyard. vineyard. I've not left you. I know that you are there and I'm thinking about you. Amen. And de and I am delighted to see how orderly you are and how firm your faith in Christ is. I'm present with you in spirit and delight to see how orderly you are and how firm your faith in Christ is. Amen. Can we always know? Can we, can we always remember that we are not alone? That we belong to a body of Christ, to, to, to the same body of Christ. That even if our spiritual leaders are not there, there are things that we have to do. That God sees everything. Amen. Let us not be people who serve men, but people who serve God in the name of Jesus. That in everything that we remain firm in our faith. Amen. And continue to do good works in the mighty name of Jesus, so that everything we do, we give God the glory. Hallelujah. Amen. We thank God for our moment together this morning. We thank our God. We bless Him for His faithfulness. He will never fail us. The God who has called us is able to accomplish His will in our lives. We bless Him for His goodness. We bless Him for His love. For being our God. Hallelujah. Amen. I want to read Lamentations 3, 22 to 23. Because of the, of, because of the Lord's great love, we are not consumed. For His compassions never fail. They are new every morning. Great is your faithfulness. Hallelujah. Amen. Lamentations 3, 22 to 23. Because of the Lord's great love, we are not consumed. Amen. For his compassions never fail. They are new every morning. Great is his faithfulness. Hallelujah. Amen. Romans 8, 18. I consider that our present sufferings are not what comparing with the glory that will be revealed in us. I consider that our present sufferings are not what comparing with the glory that will be revealed in us. Hallelujah. Amen. Whatever sufferings we are passing through today, let us know that it's not what comparing to the glory of God that will be revealed in us at the last day. In the name of Jesus, we will receive the price, what God has promised that He's going to do for each one of us. Amen. At the end, 
whatever we are passing through today, we cannot compare it. It's incomparable. We cannot compare it to what God is going to give to us, what we have in Christ. Amen. It's the treasure of God's wisdom and knowledge. That's what we learned this morning. That we, we should get to a stage where we say, yes, we truly understand what God has done for us in our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ. Hallelujah. Amen. Second Corinthians 5.20 we are therefore Christ's ambassadors, as though God were making it a us. We implore you in Christ, on Christ's behalf, be reconciled to God. Second Corinthians 5.20 We are therefore Christ's ambassadors, as though God were making it a us. We implore you in Christ, on Christ's behalf, be reconciled to God. Hallelujah. Amen. That's my handwriting. I wrote something I cannot say clearly. We praise God for His faithfulness. is our God. Yes. There's nothing that God will not do for us through our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ. Let us know who we are, that we are the ambassadors of God. Amen. And that God has already reconciled to us, to Him, through our Lord Jesus Christ. Let us be where God has placed us. Amen. Let us continue to do good things good deeds in the name of Jesus and not allow anyone to quote in front of us. Amen. Because our God who has promised is faithful to keep his promises in Jesus' mighty name. Amen. Malachi 2, 7 For the lips of a priest ought to, pre to preserve knowledge because he is the messenger of the Lord Almighty. And people seek instruction from his mouth. For the lips of a priest ought to preserve knowledge because he is the messenger of the Lord Almighty. And people seek instruction from his mouth. Amen. We pray that every priest of God, in the name of Jesus, will preserve knowledge. Amen. Because people seek instruction from their mouth. They are messengers of God Almighty. The priests are mess messengers of God Almighty. And people seek instruction from their mouth. Amen. We come against every spirit that we make the, 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 the mouths of our priest to begin to say things that are contrary to the will of God. We pray that the instructed tongues that God has given tongues that God has given to them that they will use it as messengers of God Almighty to instruct people that will come to them to tell them the truth that they will be agent of the truth of God in the mighty name of Jesus. That God will continue to anoint and refresh them every day as they do the work of God in Jesus' name. Amen. Second Corinthians six one as God's co-workers. We urge you not to receive God's grace in vain. Second Corinthians six Corinthians six one. As God's co-workers, we urge you not to receive God's grace in vain. We pray that God's grace will not be received in vain this day. That we know the God that has called us. That we believe that God can do everything that He will do in our lives. Amen. That to our faith. The measure of faith that God has given to us, that has made us to receive this, this good news of salvation, that we should have good works. Amen. Part of the good works for us to demonstrate to God that we truly love Him and we believe is for us to begin to proclaim this gospel of salvation to the nations, to tell the people around us what God has done. Amen. That's good works. And begin to show the love of God and the peace that we have received from our Lord and Savior Jesus, Jesus, Jesus Christ to the world around us in the name of Jesus. Amen. We will never forget who we are, that we are ambassadors of God. We are ambassadors of God in this world. In Jesus' mighty name. Amen. Today, that peace has been set. Are you ready to come to dine with God? Or are you busy, too busy going about your business and that you cannot come? Take a moment of your busy schedule. Come and enjoy the feast that God has set before you this day. In Jesus' mighty name. Amen. Do not be one of those that will say, I cannot come. I've married me a new wife. I'm very busy. I have a business commitment. Don't bother me. Don't let us not be one of those that will say that, but one that we just humbly come before God to enjoy what God has said before us today. In the name of Jesus. Amen. At this time we are going to pray. Father, we bless you. We thank you for your faithfulness to us. We thank you, Lord God, for everything you have done in our lives, for keeping us alive to see this day which you have made. We are such a holy name. You are God and God alone. We thank you for our Lord Jesus Christ. We thank you for the salvation you have given to us. We thank you for the mystery. Your mystery you have made known to us at this time and ages of our lives, O oh Lord God. That in Jesus Christ is the hidden, is your hidden treasures of your wisdom and knowledge. Jehovah, we thank you because we know that your Holy Spirit will continue to reveal everything we need to know about your kingdom, O oh Lord God, so that we all attain unto spiritual maturity in the name of Jesus. 
We bless you this day. We see for the praise of God. Father, we truly love you. We go out to proclaim this gospel of salvation to the nations. Father, give us the spirit of boldness to go out this day, Father Lord, and a word for your children, Jehovah God, in the name of Jesus. Father, we thank you. We bless you. You are our God. Glory. We see for the praise today. In Jesus' mighty name, we have prayed. Amen. Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. God has been good to you. Testify by the goodness of God to the people around you. Faith comes by hearing and by hearing the word of God. Hallelujah. You are blessed this day. God loves you. Hallelujah. Amen. Glory. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Hallelujah.